Mariners are searching, you've been far too long at sea. Mariners are searching, you've been far too long at sea. Okay, one second, okay. okay. And that just repeats. Anyway, you marry it, Julius, you want to throw in a fifth or a... Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that, um, obviously, the piece is uh, it's kind of a somber piece, but... Yeah, okay, so, so let's use... Let's fiddle with this then. The house where we recorded, uh, where I recorded uh, the Lost Years, and it was on a tiny four-track cassette recorder I had just gotten, and um, I called it a soundtrack, but I guess they call it a sound installation uh, to go along with some paintings and sculpture that I had in an exhibition in a, what was uh, the art gallery of Fells Point. My exhibit, Creatures That Die in a Season, here was an exhibit of prints, and there were lino cuts and paintings. The idea was back then, without having a, a sound system, the, a music piped into the gallery is just to put the music on a cassette and you could bring a Walkman along with you and put your earphones on, your headphones on, and walk around the gallery and, and observe the pieces. And a lot of the titles of the pieces uh, coincided with the titles of the musical pieces. The name was an inside joke because I, I didn't really have any clients, so I called it Secret Sound. I didn't want it to be a secret, but uh, Mark was one of my first clients, I think. I have great, very warm memories of recording with John and, and, and here, and I can kind of, when you listen to something, I kind of unearth some, some memories about living there and the time and, of course, being a lot younger. Guys like Mark, what's cool about them is when they come in with ideas, they don't know what rules they may be breaking. and there is no box, so they're automatically outside the box. I was trying to think, John, if that was one of the oldest pieces of equipment you have that Roland. Did. That yeah, that keyboard there, right there with the 80 keys. That, that's probably as old as we've been working together. That thing's probably from '84. Yeah. Have you ever seen Mark's handwriting? You know, the E's are three. I, you know, I look at it, and I just go, wow. It's like I need a ruler and, a, you know, it's the, the E is just three horizontal lines and it's very distinctive and, of course, you know, he's an artist. He, he does those uh, etches, the wooden things, and then Climbing. you put it on to, I don't know what you do. They're pretty cool looking. There was a period after the... the, the uh, the initial punk days in, in Baltimore where you had about five or six different clubs to play. And at one point, Max was one of the few places in the city that still booked live, live music. It seemed like it, maybe three or four nights a week they had, they had bands in here. This was the Canton Gallery and I exhibited here. I used to get some stuff framed here. And, and now it's a nail salon. Words turn cold in the wild house. Doors swing back and forth. And I wish there was something to keep us together. Time stands still in the wild house. The kingdom within subsides. Let there be storms, open the doors, and there I'll stand. If you could find one other human being in the world that uh, you know finds an affinity with what you're doing, or is touched or moved by that, and uh, in visual art, if somebody invests in your work enough to, and likes it enough to put it on their wall, you know, that's that's quite an honor for for me.
So something like that. Yeah, I like it. I like that ending. Nate.